In this video we're going to talk about mainspring. As you know in the last video we were taking apart the mercury filled pendulum clock and it fought me all the way but eventually I managed to get it apart and I put all the parts through the cleaner that's brush cleaning and now we're ready to put back together but what are we going to do with the mainsprings? On this clock there are two there's one which uh, powers the timing side and there's one that powers the strike side. So how are we going to get the main springs out of the barrel? Well you may have seen some videos on YouTube of uh, clock makers who have taken the springs out using their hands. Um, I'm not a great fan of that idea. Um, I've got Ten fingers and I guess I'm going to need them all if I can continue to uh, do clocks for a few years yet so um, I'm not going to do it by hand. So a few years ago I made a mainspring extraction tool and I'll show you that now. You can buy ready-made mainspring winder tools but they're a few hundred pounds uh, but as I've got a workshop I made my own. This one here was based on a design by a, a chap called Joe Collins, who uh, Australian, I think. Anyway, uh, a lot of clock makers uh, thought his idea was very good and safe to use. So I made this one out of uh, some lumps of aluminium on the milling machine, and uh, it's been very successful to date. Um, the way it works is you get your main spring, you put it into there, and you wind the main spring up enough so that it reduces enough so that you can get a sleeve in between the spring and the outer edge of the of the, of the barrel and then you can unwind you so you can slot that in and then unwind the spring into the sleeve and then you can take the sleeve out of the barrel and that's the first stage of getting the spring out of the barrel and then you can put this back into the machine and then unwind it and then the spring will come out of, of the sleeve and there you have the spring out thing so so on this particular machine here i've done several main springs in the past this is obviously for a larger barrel and what i found was when i came to this one they're either too big too small so I had to make another sleeve up which I did here so that that just fits just nicely inside the barrel but enough so that the spring can feed into in, inside it the other thing was um, main springs out of grandfather clocks uh, and other clocks have an arbor which is a quarter inch diameter but this one, of course, isn't a quarter of an inch. In fact, it's it's about 0.138 of an inch diameter. So, because that's a quarter inch hole there when I put the barrel into there it would flop around so I've had to make a little inner sleeve to go in there so that it sits firmly in that when it's being unwound right so let's get ready to take the springs out of the barrels
So here we have both springs out of the clock. I've had a quick check over them and the springs themselves seem to be in good condition. There's no cracks, tears or anything. They're covered in grease. Um, way too much grease in there. Um, so I will have to do something about that. Um, but here we have it. Now, what are we going to do? Are we going to keep these springs or are we going to replace them for new ones? The A lot of people say that if the spring size is less than two and a half times the diameter of the barrel that it came from, then it's shot. In other words, it's, um, it's set and it's lost its springiness and therefore won't um, give the power that it originally had. Now, I don't know what to do here. This is my clock. I've never seen it running. And so I don't know whether these springs are shot or not. So what I'm going to do is um, put these back in and then see how the clock runs. If it runs um, not say the full eight days, maybe it'll only do three or four days. Um, I may think again, because if I plan to keep this clock myself, it's quite nice for an eight day clock to go for eight days. So you're only winding all your clocks and I've got several in home that uh, I wind them all on the same day once a week. So maybe I will change the springs if that's the case. If you're repairing this clock for someone else, um, you need to think again because you could replace the springs with a new spring. But by doing that, um, there's a few things to think about here. First of all, um, a bit more about springs. Um, you probably remember from school when you were studying spring theory and uh, shame on you if you weren't awake when that was happening. Um, but I'll let you off this time because I guess I wasn't awake either when uh, it was being mentioned. But um, things about spring strength. Um, strength of a spring is governed by two things, the width of the spring and essentially if you say double the width of the spring then you will be doubling the strength of the spring as well. The other thing is the thickness of the spring. Now in that case the strength is equal to the cube of the thickness so if you increase the thickness the um, there is quite a large change in the strength of the spring. So if you're to replace this spring with a new, more modern spring, um, be also aware that um, spring technology or that the blue steel that they use these days is probably a lot stronger than the spring steel that they used when this clock was made several hundred years ago. And so if you bought another spring of the same thickness and width, you may well have a stronger spring than the original spring. And that can cause problems because if it's too strong, you're putting extra stress on the clock movement. And although it may appear to work when it's uh, put back in, the, st the extra strength in the spring will mean that the once the lubrication of the movement wears away, which will wear away probably at a faster rate than a, a normal um, correct size spring would do, if that's the case, then you'll start to wear away the train of the clock. And so you're going to life the clock a lot quicker. So if you're replacing the spring, you need to try and work out whether you want to maybe have um, a slightly narrower uh, spring or a reduced thickness one so to compensate for the fact that the spring steel used these days is 
um, more stronger than the original spring so it's a, one more thing to think about and the other thing to think about is this clock there are probably still quite a few of these in existence uh, it, it's not a valuable clock maybe three or four hundred pounds maybe but I don't think it's that rare but if your customer's clock is a clock of significant value then if you start replacing springs within it um, the value of the clock is going to uh, reduce dramatically so you've got a, a balance to make so you need to ask your customer what do they want do they want to keep it as original um, in which case uh, you keep you use the existing springs and hey you just tell them that uh, it may need winding twice a week rather than once a week uh, but at least you've got an original clock and it will hold its value so I think I'll leave it there for this one um, the next video will show us putting all this back together again and uh, hopefully uh, observing a clock that hasn't ticked for many a year so thanks very much for watching and uh, uh, hopefully see you in the next video bye for now